Who is St. Anselm? One thing that we're going to quickly discover is that there doesn't seem to be any portraits of St. Anselm that were completed during his lifetime. This is a likeness of St. Anselm in stained glass from the Chester Cathedral Cloister in the city of Chester, Cheshire in England. This likeness was created in the 19th century. Here's Anselm again. This is a picture from the National Portrait Gallery in London, England. This engraving was done in 1584. That's over 500 years after Anselm died. One last picture. This is St. Anselm's personal seal. This could be the closest likeness that we have to St. Anselm, given that it was presumably used by Anselm himself. A personal seal was pressed into the wax used to close a letter, and this would prove that the letter had in fact come, came from Anselm. My Latin's a little rusty, but the words around the seal say something like, the seal of Archbishop, excuse me, the seal of Archbishop Anselm by the grace of God, or perhaps uh, with the grace of God. I haven't looked at enough personal seals to know what would be normal here. As I said, Anselm was born in 1033. He entered the monastery of Beck Normandy at 27 and eventually worked his way up to the position of abbot. An abbot is the person that's in charge of a monastery, so he got his way all the way up to being a boss. Uh, it was during his time at Beck that Anselm began working out and eventually published his theological views. This includes the work that we're looking at today. In 1093, Anselm was appointed Archbishop of Canterbury. This made him the bishop in charge of all of the churches in England. It's a very powerful position. This, however, started a turbulent time in his life because Anselm didn't agree with the two kings that reigned during his time as archbishop. In fact, he was exiled to Rome twice during this time. However, he eventually was allowed to return home, and he died in England in 1109 at the age of 76, which is very, very old for this time. So our reading today is the ontological argument from Anselm's work, Proslogoion. Proslogoion means address, and the whole book, except for the prologue, is addressed to God, and it takes the form of a prayer.